Dean Coral was, yeah, he was a sadistic, rapist, pedophilic murderer. He was, he was horrible. And he used this one teenager to lure in other kids. Well, that one teenager, oh Jesus, made him mad. Uh, by bringing a girl. Uh, no. No, 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 no. No, I'm not doing anything. Thank you. Please don't hurt me. Okay. Where do we go? Okay. Um, so. Basically how he pissed. How this teenager pissed off. Elmer, um, pissed off the candy man. Dean Coral was he brought a girl. So he had a crush on this girl. She was already boyfriend-girlfriend with someone else. Uh, well, he fixed that by luring her boyfriend, also one of his close friends from high school, and lured him over to Dean's and let him be raped and killed. So that way he could swoop in and take his lady, because he liked her. Um, but he made the mistake of bringing her to the house, and that's one thing that you never did, is you never brought girls to Dean's house. He did not like women. He didn't want any competition. Well, basically, he drugged them. They all woke up tied up, and he's like, if you don't kill her, I'll kill you. And he just... He's like, okay, okay, I'll kill her, I'll kill her. So he unties Wayne's hands, and he he throws the gun at him, and he goes, fucking shoot her, and then I'm going to make you watch while I rape and fuck your other friend and kill him too. And he's like, all right, Dean, and Dean turns around, and he's nude because he's literally about to rape and kill this kid, and his accomplice shoots him a couple times in the back. Well... Again, not a long story short, but I'm trying to simplify it as much as I can to catch you up, Travis. They buried bodies in a few places. Because they did kill... He killed a lot of kids, and he moved frequently. I think he had like eight different addresses or something like that. Maybe eight or twelve over the course of like five years. Something crazy. And... um so Elmer Wayne Henley is basically like, if you give me a reduced sentence and yada blah de blue blue, I will tell you where all the bodies are. And they're like, oh, of course. Yeah. So he's like, he has this huge boat shed. It's a storage shed where you store your boat. It's a pretty big shed. And that's where they would dig it up. They would dig up. They will bear out the dirt. And they had a wheelbarrow in the body. And he rented it from this old lady. And the old lady said that he always had young boys with him. And that, that there were always dogs <laughs> surrounding his boat shed. And when they told detectives, hey, there's like, like a dozen plus bodies buried here. They didn't get forensic teams. They didn't get anthropological teams. They didn't even get cops. They got prisoners and said, here, here's some shovels and some cigarettes and some beer. You're going to dig for dead kids inside of a boat shed in 102 degree heat in the middle of summer in Texas. So they did for days and days and days. And they found kid after kid after kid after kid. And they found one kid that his dick was so well preserved because he would package them separately. They could tell that he bit them off with his bare teeth. Um, so these convicts are digging day in and day out. I'm like, for like a few days to the point where they're like chest high in black it's it's human waste and just sludge and cause it's putrefic it's putrid it's putrefication that's what they're literally digging through and they just eventually say fuck it
Like, literally. They just say, fuck it. This is too gross. It's too hot. It's too stinky. It's too much work. The prisoners don't want to do it anymore, and I don't want to fucking do it. So... Yeah. They... Le they left after only finding a certain amount of bodies. Even after Elmer Wayne Henley was like, no, there's more kids buried there. There's like at least three more. And some people estimate probably around five. So there are five raped, tortured, murdered, and forgotten kids underneath the dirt. I don't even know if they tore down the boat shed. I don't think they did. I know that it was well in use into the 80s and 90s. So, who knows? There could still be a structure. But the Houston Police Department was so fucking lazy that they were like, fuck it. We don't want to do this anymore. It's gross. So they walked away. So there's, there's, they willingly and knowingly abandoned a search that could solve answers for parents missing their kids. Uh, it just, it fucks with me, you know? It's just so shitty and evil. No, Zul's will, no. I don't want any of your bullshit. I don't want it. I don't want your bullshit. Aged crab foam. What? What is aged crab foam? That sounds horrible. Who would want that ever? Ugh. Why are you invisible? You're not. Everyone knows you're there. Oh god. Please don't chase me. Ooh, don't hurt me, little crab. <gasps> oh my god, he's so big. He's so big and cute. Look, all bubbly. All bubbly. Oh my god, this dude is. I don't want to hurt him. He's not... He ain't hurt nobody. Oh, I'm sorry, Bubbly. Ah! But yeah, I get pissed off when people try to politicize a kid's murder based on uh, race. There's so many forgotten kids that, like, people don't realize how many kids actually go missing in a year. Thousands. And they're never, and, and most of them are never found. It's really scary, dude. Like, I don't trust nobody. <laughs> people are fucking evil.